Hey there, my friend. This is Dr. Anthony Balduzzi, and I want to welcome you back to another episode here on our Fit Mother Project podcast. And boy, do we have an awesome episode for you today because we are joined by one of our inspiring Fit Mother program members, Tracy Ware. Tracy turned 50 years young recently, and in her 40s, she noticed that her metabolism was slowing down a little bit. She was gaining some weight, and Tracy's been healthy pretty much her whole life. In fact, she describes herself as being on the thinner side, but she noticed that some pounds were creeping on, hormonal changes were happening for her during menopause, and she just wanted to get her body into a place where she felt good about it, that she loved the way she looked and how she felt, and she used our Fit Mother program to do that. And Tracy has a really interesting story because she didn't have a lot of to lose. In fact, I think she's only lost 10 pounds on the scale through the program. But what Tracy shares is that the changes she's made are go far beyond the scale. And those changes are a byproduct of focusing on the right things with her nutrition, with her exercise. And there's been so many non-scale victories she's experienced. And she loves the way her body looks and feels now over a few short months of using this Fit Mother program. So I'm super excited to bring you this conversation. Tracy's energy is absolutely beautiful. And you'll see that when you listen and, and watch this conversation. So without further ado, let's get into today's episode with Fit Mother, Tracy Ware. Hi, Tracy. Welcome officially to the Fit Mother Project podcast. I'm so happy to have you here. Oh, thanks, Dr. Anthony. I'm excited to be here. And to kick things off, I'd love for you to introduce yourself to all the ladies and guys who are listening, your name, your age, where you're from, and anything you'd like to share about your family and what you do for work. Okay. Okay. Uh, My name is Tracy. I um, am 50 almost 51 this month. Um, I know. Uh, (laughs) Best years coming forward. Um, I have three children. They're uh, 22, 20, and almost 18. Uh, I live in Utah, but I grew up in California and moved here. Love the mountains, love hiking. Um, My husband, I'm trying to get him on the fit father. He's really, he's I like starting it, but like a little slowly, but we're working on him. But yeah, so I'm excited. I, you know, I kind of told Amy and Trina, I was like, I don't know if my story is really like all that relevant to people, but I hope today that when they hear my story, that there's other moms out there that'll say, oh, you know, I can relate to that. And um, that's what I hope. I'm guaranteed it's going to be relatable. I mean, you work this program, you improved your health and like, we're all on this journey in different capacities. So tell me what prompted you to look for something to improve your health and fitness and find fit mother project. Like, how'd you find us? What was going on at the time when you were checking this program out? Let's start there. Okay. Well, I, um, I've watched your podcast and I've looked at your videos for probably almost a year before I started. Uh, I had a friend tell me about you and she was like, oh, I'm going to, I'm doing this new thing, a fit mother project. And, you know, 2020 was pretty hard for us, um, yeah, like everybody. Uh, but like, mm-hmm. you know, I can tell you a little bit about my, my history back then, um, but got to a point where I had some really severe anxiety and uh, raising adult children was really hard. I was going through menopause, you know, just all this stuff and just weight kept coming on. And of course those mm-hmm. caramel cashew Sundays weren't probably the best thing to go and eat when you're feeling bad, but, um, just a lot of that stuff. And I just didn't feel good. And so I like had watched some of your videos and I saw, Oh, the perfect plate. And I was like, mm-hmm. I can do that. And, you know, some other things, but I didn't fully commit until May of this year. And so I thought, uh, you know, he says some good things, but my mom was always dieting. My mom tried, you know, Metafast, Nutrisystem, had liposuction, all that stuff. I saw that growing up and she would lose 75 pounds and then she'd gain it all back. She was, didn't exercise, you know, said, I'm eating healthy. I'm eating right, but I just gain all this weight. And so I was like, yeah, I don't want that. I don't want that to happen to me. Um, And then, you know, in 2020, my doctor, I went to him and I was complaining about the 12 pounds that I had added. Well, this was just actually last year. And I'm like, I don't like how I feel. I've got this extra weight on me. And he he said to me in all goodness of his heart, he's like, I have so many women that come in here that would die to look like you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. But that didn't help how I was feeling how I just didn't feel comfortable in my body. I was 
sitting down at work. I work at an elementary school and, you know, that little fat hanging over the top of your pants. I was like, I'm just uncomfortable in me. I've never really struggled with weight. I was always a really skinny kid, but you know, then you turn 30 and that little extra weight comes on. Then you turn 40 and the extra five pounds come on. And then as I got to menopause, all my friends were like, you know, this is just how it is. This is what we have to live with. And I thought, I guess I'm going to embrace the squishy grandma that can be coming because that's, that's what I am. And, and I mean, I don't have any grandkids yet, but it was like, I just thought I'm, I'm eating right. I've, I have a diabetic and he got diagnosed with diabetes at three years old. And so I've always been trying to like, we always try to eat a healthy diet. We've always tried to do that. I've always exercised. That's my stress release. That's like all that I, you know, and so, um, just this weight gain, I was like, I guess this is just it. This is just what I'm going to have to live with. And then when I was looking at one of your podcasts, I thought, okay, uh, maybe I should do this. I've, I just don't believe in diets. I don't believe in these fad things because I saw my mom do it. And then Mother's Day was coming around. And because I work full-time during the school year, summers are where I kind of like focus right. on getting back. And so my husband would always buy me a membership to a gym or some spa place for the summer. And then I'd go and try to shed all the, you know, people at an elementary school, they show you love by giving you sugar, like cookies, sure. soda, all this stuff. And you're like, I love you, but I don't want all this. And so this year I was, your, uh, an email came up that said, here's a mother's day sale and I love yeah. a good sale. So I was like, oh. <laughs> I go, honey, I want this for mother's day. And He's like, okay. And so I bought into the, the, you know, first 30 days and I thought I'm going to try it and just see how it goes. And I'm really good at schedules. I love a good schedule, you know, having children, having a diabetic, uh, I have other kids with health issues. And so like doctor's appointments, all that stuff. I'm always a very scheduled person. And so I loved when you're like, okay, here's your meal schedule options, mm -hmm. you know? So I was like, sweet, I'll pick one of those. And I picked the 10.30, 2.30, 6.30. And yeah. I'm like, that fits for me. I think I can do that. And then the perfect plate. I'm like, yeah, I don't want to have to buy prepackaged food. I want to be able to live this lifestyle forever. And I'm yeah. like, that's simple. I don't want to count my ratios. I don't right. want to count my calories. I, I tried that once and counting calories causes me stress because I'm like, oh my right. gosh, there's that many calories in an egg. There's that many this <laughs> and that, you know? So I'm like, I'm not going to eat. This took away all that. So I'm like, all right, half veggies, a quarter of healthy protein or fat and a quarter healthy, you know, or healthy carb or a healthy protein. And yeah. I was like, I can do that. That's doable. Yeah. And then I started on the apex 10 and I was like, I can do this these exercises aren't out of my like realm of comfort. I'm not hurting my knees or my back. I'm, I'm good. So I like, I'm full in. I was like, I'm full in. I'm going to do this. And, um, I kind of started getting complainy because I wasn't seeing the pounds go on the scale mm -hmm. and I didn't want to be on a scale all the time, but I was like, okay, I'm going to weigh myself every day and I'm going to do that because it plays with my head. And, uh, so like I was, I was at my friend's baby shower who had talked to me about fit mother first. And I said, you know, it's been a month. I've lost maybe four to five pounds. And I was like, just kind of discouraged. And she's like, yeah, it's not about the scale. I'm like, oh no, it's not about the scale. I, <laughs> you know, so it wasn't until like that next day. And I took my after pictures. Okay, I have to tell you, my before pictures wanted to make, I wanted to cry. I was like, what is that fat underneath my bra? I'm like, where did that come from? I've never had that. And I was wearing a swim trunks that I had worn like five years ago when I took the kids to Hawaii and my stomach was like protruding out. And I thought, oh my gosh, what happened? So then I took my after pictures of that month with only a four to five pound loss and my goal was 12. And I looked at the pictures and I was floored. 
I just went, oh my gosh, this really works. Like it really works. I was like, this is just like everything else. It doesn't really work. And then I saw like those fat things underneath my bra were gone. My like <laughs> waist was cave, it was going in again. And like my butt was just like less. And I just went, oh my gosh. Now I never would have ever posted pictures of me ever before. And I posted those on your the the Facebook page. And I was like, okay, ladies, this really works. Like I was skeptical. I was disappointed at the scale weight. And then looking at those before and after pictures, just, it was like, this really works. That is amazing. Yeah. yeah. And, oh, I'm like, journey, and I can right? do it. It was a journey. Yeah, and you could do it. It was yeah. a journey. And so keep on talking. I mean, this is great. And I, I mean, <laughs> it's really amazing to see, to hear your mindset talking through these different slices and stages in the beginning. And then to have this moment where you're like, wow, this is really effective. So where do you build from there? Once you've gone through these 30 days, you're starting to get the habits going nutrition. Now, you know, the exercise and nutrition is working for you. Where'd you take it? Your next steps from there? Well, I think a lot of this is a, a mental game too. Like you have to be in a healthy mental state and that's what I did last year. You know, like I said, I, um, you know, I'm, I've been a caretaker all my life with my kids. You know, it, I've been a pancreas, I was a pancreas for many years. I, you know, my daughter, I had to take her to eye doctors because she was going to lose her vision in one eye. You know, there was just a lot of stress and, and things that built up in my life. And then when I had adult children and, and the whole COVID thing happened and we were, you know, it was very stressful. And um, I spent last year, taking care of my mental health. And I think when you take care of your mental health, I realized I'm like, I am not in control of other people's things. I can't take on their things. Even as a caretaker, you know, even as a, as a mother, I can't take on my adult children's problems as my own. I can't take on their, their health issues as my own. I can only worry about myself, but I have to be the best self that I can be to be there for them as a listening, you know, and as a help for them. And so I thought, okay, my son is not eating healthy. He's moved out on his own. His eating habits aren't good now that he's taking care of himself. And I was like, okay, I wanted to show them that I could take care of my mental health, which I did. And now I want to show them that I can take care of my physical health and be an example to them to say, you know what? We don't have to be victims of the food out there, of the situations of society, of any of that stuff. We can be in control of our own, who we are. And so the journey mentally came. So then the journey physically came. And after Mm -hmm. I saw that one month change, I was like, okay, the scale doesn't scare me anymore. Like, I'm not going to worry about that. I would look at myself in the mirror and go, I like how this looks. This looks good. Um, I used to, I exercise by myself, but then this summer I have a friend who, uh, right near us, we have beautiful mountains all around me. I mean, Utah is just beautiful. And I have a friend that uh, hikes up to the Timpanogos Cave three times a week. And it's this all uphill trail. And I said, hey, I want to go with you. And she's like, okay, we get up at six in the morning and we, we hike up. And I'm like, okay, we'll do that. And besides the exercise and, and realizing I could get up there and back at a really good amount of time, which I hadn't done before, it was the talking with friends as we're exercising. The people yeah. we met on the trail that were like-minded fitness-wise, that were like, hey, mm-hmm. way to go, you're, you're doing it. And we would cheer each other on. That was just uplifting. And so then it was like, Hey, let's try to do it faster next time. Or let's, you know, try to like do more. Like her daughter now tries to go up twice instead of just once. And so, you know, we met somebody that goes up 12 times, has gone up 12 times. It took (laughs) them all day, but you know, um, but I realized I'm like, we can fit, I can fit those things in and still be busy and still have, you know, friends and work and all that other stuff. Um, I go on vacations now. And I go, yeah, I'm going to feel a little bad when I come back for a couple of days, but I'm not going to stress about that. And yeah, the scale is going to go up maybe a couple of pounds, but that's okay. I'm not going to beat myself up about that this time because I know 
when I'm back on my schedule, when I'm back yep. on, you know, all that stuff, it's going to come off. And it does within like a day or two. And then mm-hmm. it's like, uh, you know, the one thing I really loved too, was when you're like, you're not hungry when you wake up, you're dehydrated. <laughs> and yeah. so drink your water. And I was like, that's true. Well, sometimes I can fast even longer in the morning past my 10 30 yeah. because I've, I've exercised, I've drank tons of water and I'm like, I'm not hungry yet. Yeah. And, and I would never have done that before. It was always like, you have to eat breakfast right when you wake up, you have to eat at these, you know, and I'm like, now I listen to my body more right. when it says, I'm hungry. I'll go, are you, or are you thirsty? Let's drink first. And then I drink <laughs> nice. and then it's like, wait, no, you really weren't hungry. Or, you know, I, and kind of with the fit mother thing too, I organized my pantry mm-hmm. and I put all the healthy stuff, you know, I got rid of, you know, the junk stuff. Now that the boys are gone and out of the house, I'm like, okay, we just don't need all this in the house, mm-hmm. you know? And so I like organized everything where it's easy to grab the, the healthy snack or it's easy to grab yeah. the, the, and made sure that the, the fruits out there and the veggies mm-hmm. and, and all that stuff. And I was like, we just, I just wanted to organize everything. It's like, I'm organized my brain. I've organized my body and I've got to organize my surroundings. It's just like yes. all that, that planning. And, yeah. and when it's, when it's there, it's easy. Right. Well, it's, that is, it's wow. What an answer. I mean, you're right. It's like, it's first, and I love how you went on the journey of the year before with like the mental, emotional healing, then you express it in the physical, and now you have the skill set to actually change your environment to make it like conducive that this stuff goes on. And it kind of dovetails into my next question for you is compared to like, I know you didn't do many diets in the past, but compared to like a diet, how would you describe what like the experience being on Fit Mother is like to con- compare and contrast what that might be like? Yeah. Um, I don't feel restricted. And I think when you hear the word diet, you think restrictions and all this stuff, but when you taught how to eat and how to look at things, like when I go out to eat, I don't feel bad. I'm going to get the salmon plate and I'm going to tell them, don't put on the other stuff, just do a side of broccoli. Or, mm-hmm. you know, my daughter works at this, uh, at this restaurant that's actually pretty healthy, which I was really glad because she was going to work at a donut place. And I was like, yeah, let's not <laughs> yeah. do that. But she works at this place and I'm like, okay, I can go there. And I go, oh, look, I know I'm eating the salad and I'm going to put my protein on it. And then I barely put any dressing and it's still good. Like I don't have to like, cause that's where all the, the calories are is in those dressings. Yeah. And so I'm like, I am in control. It's not like, I don't have to say that's a point or that's a, I have to eat a prepackaged meal. I can say, okay, I can go to a restaurant and now I can find something to eat. I'm not like, oh, I have to stay at home and I have to eat boring and I can't have a good fun meal. And like yesterday I went out with a friend, she wanted to go out to breakfast and I, we went to this restaurant and normally, you know, in the years past, I would have had their like waffles or I would have had like something like that. And I was like, that omelet looks really good. And that omelet's got a lot of good stuff in there and I'm okay. Like I feel good eating that omelet. And so I felt like that was just, I took control of it and, and I learned and I grew. And then uh, when you said about the, uh, with your protein, having a 10 to one ratio and I started Mm -hmm. going, okay, my protein powder that I've always been drinking fits that. We can keep it. If it didn't fit it, I was going to get rid of it. And then I started looking at these like protein bars at Costco because I was like, okay, my husband works from home and sits at his desk a lot and misses lunch. And then he Mm -hmm. gets ravenous. So he goes out and like just puts anything in his mouth. And I'm like, honey, I'm going to buy these protein bars for you that you can have sitting by your desk. So when you get hungry, you're you're eating right. But I had to look at the back of every (laughs) single one of them. And I was like, oh, this one works. These don't. And I'm like, okay. And just giving me the skills and the knowledge of what to look for. I can look for it. I've read carbs for years as a diabetic mom. So I'm like, I I just, I can look at that. And then, you know, the sugar, I was like, oh yeah, that's like horrible protein bar, you know, as opposed to a good one. 
And then the exercises, I'm like, I am, I'm always busy. Like I like going, go, 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 go. Mm -hmm. And to get to work at eight, I like to do my exercises in the morning. And I felt like the exercises that you've done are doable. Mm -hmm. Like I said, for years, I've done exercises every morning. I've done all the YouTube videos that I could do because I'm at home and, and there's some good stuff out there, but the combination of what you have works. And so it's like, you don't have to overwork Mm -hmm. to get the results. And I love that because I'm like, I am like all about like making it precise. And I'm like, so like that apex 10, I loved, it was like, just love that. The tower of power, like that just kicks my butt. I like, I'm like, (laughs) I'm at the last round. Okay. I could do this, you know, but still it's within a doable amount of time. Or, you know, I like the M, the MM3 that like that I love, like, I'm like, oh yeah, give me that one. I I love it. So I get excited to do them. They're challenging, but I'm like, it's doable challenging. Yeah. And that's that's something I heard you say is like, you know, whether it's trying to beat your time faster when you're hiking with your friend or doing this, it sounds like you're, you've invited a new kind of challenge spirit in there where you're willing to push yourself and that builds your self-confidence and you feel good. So I actually wanted to ask you, and I'm glad you brought it up, the process of going through the Fit Mother workouts, they obviously changed you physically and you got stronger. And I actually wanted to make this comment earlier for those who are, get the privilege of watching this on video, your arms look fantastic. Oh, thank so you. So you clearly like toned up and you look really good, strong <laughs> arms, like not the, no not the flabby grandma arms that many people. <laughs> yeah, no little waving. But how did the how did the exercise change you on like the mental side, the emotional side or just kind of the process of doing hard things? How has this program shifted you in that way? Oh, good question. Um yeah, I mean I think we all have hard things we have to do in life and sometimes we just kind of think oh, it's too hard, I can't do it. And you know, for mm-hmm. me working out before, I would always just be like, okay, I'm going to stick to my, you know, 5 pound weights where I'm going to maybe go, you know, Mm -hmm. and I started doing squats with 15 pounds in each hand. And I'm like, okay, I can do this. Like it was hard at first. And then I'm like, okay. Or, or like even the pushups, I was like, oh, I've had wrist surgery and I have a metal plate, Mm -hmm. 10 screws in one wrist. And I'd be like, oh, I can't do pushups, you know? So I started them on the knees. And then the other day I was like, I'm doing a full pushup. Yeah. It's not like the most amazing pushup, but it's a full pushup. But I'm like, so I thought I can do hard things. I was challenging myself, like try it, Mm -hmm. just try it, see Mm -hmm. if it works. And if it didn't work, I was going to be like, okay, I'll go back to pushups on my knees or I'll go back to a lighter weight. It's like, it's not a failure. It's a see how far I can go. And then if I can do it, then, Hey, great. I'm going to, I'm going to do it. And if not, okay, you know, I did it. And, um, I was, I was reading this thing where it says 1% increase each day leads to success. Right. Like you don't have to, I didn't have to go and start out lifting 15 pounds to, Mm -hmm. to be great. You know, or when I was hearing other women on the, the Facebook page saying what they were doing, I'm like, yeah, okay. I'm 1% better today than I was yesterday. And then you had asked me a question too, about the whole fit mother program. And at mm-hmm. first, I loved when you um, told us to, why are you doing this? Like, what's your goal? Mm-hmm. And then go further. And then go further. Mm-hmm. And when I had to fill out that paperwork, it was like, okay, I want to lose the weight that I've gained. But then it was like, mm-hmm. okay, is that really what I want to do? No, I want to be healthier. I want to live a mm-hmm. full life over 50. I want to travel. Mm-hmm. I want to do things with my kids, my grandkids when they come and all that stuff. And it was like, I read this thing and it says, I wrote it down. When you fall in love with a process rather than the product or the end result, (laughs) that's where your happiness is. And Mm. I have really loved this whole process, like the eating better, the exercising every day, seeing the little feeling the differences in my body or having the more energy or all that. I've fallen in love with the process. So the weight on the goal was no longer the motivation for me. And I have to say that today I did finally get 10 pounds. 
And I was nice. like, yay, I'm talking to Dr. Anthony today, and I can say it to 10 pounds. But that wasn't where my happiness was in the program. Right. The pro- the yeah. just the daily things. And so that's why I signed up for more. That's why I keep going. Mm-hmm. It was like I found that joy in the first 30 days and saw the changes that were not scale related and then thought, right. this is the process I like. I like what I'm doing. I like yeah. what I'm feeling. And that doesn't matter anymore. But it's still happening. Yeah, that's that's a beautiful answer. Yeah. Truly. I mean, yeah, when we find joy in the process and the joy of just improvement itself, the joy of taking care of ourselves, then we get like this intrinsic motivation that keeps us going. And it's like so clear just seeing your energy, your demeanor, how you carry yourself that like you're like happy and you're loving this. I and I know life's not easy all the time, but it's like, it's very clear. And I think that's such a beautiful thing. Like, I mean, my, I would define health as like this junction of physical well being, you know, mental and spiritual. And I think you're really exuding health just because it's all very aligned. And I want to ask you in a couple of questions. Yeah. One is where are you going next? Like what's next for you the rest of this year, based on the stuff you've learned, anything you have upcoming that you want to be focusing on and where does your fitness and health journey take you from here? Okay. Well, I don't even know. I mean, I think my first goal is I start back to work next week. So Mm -hmm. I've created things like, how am I going to handle when those cookies come in front of me, when all those things come in front of me, um, that I've had to thought I've thought through, I've worked through because I'm one of those that Mm -hmm. I, like, I don't want somebody to feel bad when they bring me something, but then I've realized I'm like, I can still accept it. I don't have to eat it. I don't have to, but I can still accept that and say, Hey, thanks. Um, I've noticed I've talked to a lot of people about fitness and health and, and friends who are struggling. And I've like promoted this and said, Hey, it's not as, I mean, it's, you have to work at it, but it's not as bad Mm -hmm. as you're thinking. Like it's, it's a journey. And, um, you know, uh, my husband and I want to go do things where we love hiking we love, I am not a runner. Mm-hmm. I've looked at all people on the podcast saying they're running 5Ks and stuff. And I'm like, no, I don't know if I'm there yet. I'm not, I'm not a runner. Um, but I love mm-hmm. walking. I love being out there. I love, yeah. you know, just being physical. So that's my goal is yeah. plan it for me and my lifestyle. Yep. Like my lifestyle yep. in the wintertime, we snow all the time. It's not running. But like I notice when, yep. like after dinner now, I'm like, hey, let's go for a walk. Like, yeah. and we get out instead of, oh, I want that dessert because that's what you do after dinner. It's like, let's get outside right. and go for a walk. And when we're out on a walk, we see our neighbors and we talk to our neighbors and, and nice. we're doing that. Or like, and I notice that when I sit too long now, I just want to get up and do something. And right. so that's what I want for my future is just to be active. And maybe I'll put a goal like running a half marathon or doing that in my future But I'm like, I'm not going to look that far in advance because right now I'm like, I just got to focus through how am I going to handle my schooling? Like when I get into school and I'm taking care of all those kids and the candy bowl sitting there and this is sitting there Mm -hmm. because we associate sugar with happiness and love. And, you know, how Mm -hmm. can I change that atmosphere Mm -hmm. at the school too, even? And, you know, how can I, I just remember I always fought with my kids my son's teachers, I'm like, my diabetic's coming home with blood sugar levels that are just so high because you're rewarding with sugar. Let's reward with Mm -hmm. something else that, that makes the kids feel good, but is not having detrimental effects. So yeah, my goal is I'm looking for those. uh, I talked to Amy. I'm like, I need shorter workouts in the morning because I got to get them in before I go to work. And then I'm going to work out again later, but I want to get in a good workout. And so she's given me some, and I've been looking at some, and I'm I'm getting my plan put together. Nice. So that's what I'm doing right now. That's beautiful. And I mean, and really wise, and I hope everyone can hear some of the things you're focusing on, how like one, you know, this transition period's coming up for you and you know, you need to kind of dial in and recalibrate this health routine. That's now going to be a little different once you're in school and you roll that and then whatever seasons of life throw at you, I I know you guys are going to be out there walking, enjoying health and vitality and beautiful Utah nature. So that's really exciting. 
in the in the closing chapter of our conversation, I want to ask you a little bit about just like you as a mom. You know, you have adult children now. I'm I'm curious to hear what are some things that were really important to you as a parent as you're raising your kids, some core values or core lessons you tried to instill in your kids. Oh, thank you for that question. Um you know, I I grew up in a, a home where, you know, my parents, I, I try to tell all parents, you're doing the best you can. You know, we all are given different childhood challenges that we bring into raising our children. You know, and I grew up with parents that smoked all the time and that, you know, that was how they managed their stress. And so I was like, I'm not going to do that. I want to, I want to manage my stress differently. But then I got ch- children who were you know, kind of stressful, a diabetic and some other Mm -hmm. health challenges with each child. And I was like, okay, I'm I'm exercising. I'm trying to work out my stress. Um, I tried to feed them well. I tried to, but you know, it's like, we all try to take care of our children, but then mine, I was like, it's life or death for some, some of these things that I've got to, so that's very stressful. So one thing I learned just recently too, as you know, I've grown through this it's have compassion with yourself as a parent, you know, have mm-hmm. compassion with your journey and your fitness and your weight loss. Like you're amazing. Like just our yeah. bodies and ourselves. I'm a very religious person, mm-hmm. you know? And so I like, I mm-hmm. sit there and go, this body was created. It's amazing. Be compassionate yeah. with it. If it's not perfect, if you're not a perfect parent, if you haven't met the perfect meals for your kids every day, if you've, you know, not been, it's okay. Compassion is so important. And so Mm -hmm. that's where I'm kind of at now. And, you know, I did the best with my children. I did the best I could. And as adults, they're going to think whatever they want to think about their childhood. And I've realized with my emotional journey, I can't change that. But what I can change is here forward. Am I compassionate with myself? Am I compassionate with them and their journeys? Am I compassionate with all that's going on. And I want to show them that, you know, mom may not have always been the best mom, but she's growing and changing. We grow and change throughout our lives. We're not stagnant. And so it's like, so if you thought I wasn't the best mom, okay, I'm going to be the best mom for you now, or I could try to be the best mom for you and for for your children. So I just kind of think it's like, we do our best with the tools we have, gain more tools, I've learned more tools from you. I've learned, I just like learning all the time. And then showing that to my children, that you can grow and change throughout your whole life. You're not, you're not just stuck in a, I eat this way, or I feel this way. Um, You can change. And the changes are slow and gradual. That 1% each day can lead to a whole great change. And then be compassionate with each other. All right, Tracy. Well, I want to thank you again so much for a beautiful conversation, everything you shared. And I mentioned this to you earlier, but it's like a pleasure to listen to you talk. Honestly, you just have beautiful energy (laughs) and you shared a lot of beautiful things. And I love to end with this question. And that is, what does it mean to you having gone through this program to be a fit mother? What does fit mother mean to you? Oh, um, I think fit mother incorporates a lot, um, you know, mentally fit, mentally healthy, physically healthy, emotionally healthy, um, all of that. I think when we take charge of our lives and that's what you've given is taking charge, taking charge of your eating, taking charge of your exercise, like taking charge of it. It's huge. It builds this like confidence in yourself, this connection with your body. Um, I think it's spiritual. It's everything. It's like you, I feel like I can do so much now. Like I can take control of the hard things. Um, they don't control me. I, I look at food in a different way. That, that food is there to help me. I'm not bound to it. It's, yeah. you know, I don't use it as a crutch. It's, it's there to fuel me to get all the things that I want to do. So I'm fit in every, in every way so that I can be there for myself, for other people. You know, I, I'm very community oriented. I feel like we're, I want to be there for other people. And if I'm, yeah. if I'm healthy in all those ways, uh, I think your fit mother goes even further than just the weight loss. It's right. further than just the physical look. It's, mm-hmm. me- it's all of that. And when we're there for other mm-hmm. people, 
That's what it's all about. That's where your connections come. That's where your happiness and joy in life comes. So I'm grateful for this. I'm grateful I I got on the bandwagon instead of just looking at little pieces here and there. And I'm I'm glad I stuck with it. Even when I was thinking it didn't really do anything, it did. It really did. And it's it's made a big change in my life. I'm really grateful for it. Well, another beautiful answer. And thank you for coming on today and just sharing your heart and your journey. I'm excited for your year ahead of continued progress and well-being and for you and your family. I wish you and your husband many years of great travels and adventures, enjoying your great health and and all the new things that happen. So Tracy, thank you for coming on. I appreciate you tremendously. Our entire Fit Mother team appreciates you tremendously. And uh, you're amazing. Thanks, Dr. Anthony.